This world is the only one that exists. Learn its laws and obey them. This is true philosophy. This is a quote from my favorite recurring character, Telamon of Arcadia, who uh, I mentioned in the previous episode and who appears first in this book. He's a, I'm gonna talk about him in this episode and in a couple more after this because the episode is titled The Universal Soldier. And kind of the question I wanted to kind of ask here is, are soldiers the same? Are warriors the same in all eras, in all countries? And I think they are. I think that if we were to take an Army Ranger, a Navy SEAL, a U.S. Marine, any, any American warrior, contemporary warrior, and move them back into Caesar's legions or Alexander's phalanx or back among the Spartans, that, this, that he would fit right in. He or she would fit right in. Because I think that the warrior archetype is universal. It doesn't change. That's what kind of empowers and defines a warrior in any era. And getting to the character of Telamon, that's what he is to me. And that's what he is in, in, in the four books that he appears in. He is the supreme example of the warrior in terms of skill, you know, he can use any weapon, he can, he can endure any adversity, he can, he can overcome any challenge, but he's a very disillusioned warrior. He's a guy who has seen and done everything. He's moved beyond the concept of the Spartans at Thermopylae, in other words, a pure warrior in a purely good war. He's moved beyond Alexander's idea of conquest as something great. He's moved beyond the idea of a champion, somebody like Achilles in the Trojan War. He's moved beyond the idea of the citizen soldier that we talked about, of someone like our greatest generation who would go off to fight and then return. And there's another aspect about Telamon. Telamon appears in, in my books in different centuries, and yet he hasn't aged at all. There's, there's a quality about him that uh, he can't seem to die. He seems to be unkillable. In other words, in the universe, he's a universal soldier. What's interesting about this to me is that I never planned Telamon in any of these books. He just kind of appeared full grown on the page and in complete with that aspect to him that he can't die. And I really don't even know why this is. Is he paying for some sin that he'd committed in the past and he has to you know, continue to serve as a soldier all the time? I don't know. But the metaphor is the concept that the soldier, the warrior archetype never changes. Just as war never goes away, this character never goes away. And Telamon is a character, what's interesting to me about him is that he's the individual. He's an isolated individual. He's like, he's like me. He's like you and me. He's not he doesn't have a flag that he can fight for. He doesn't have a leader that he believes in. He doesn't have a cause. He has to kind of find his way and define his own, his own way, his own code of honor, his own way of dealing with wars that come and go and come and go. Because he is a warrior. He, he doesn't leave this archetype. He remains in it. But within it, he's trying to find his way. And I just, I want to read one passage for, for you that uh, is the final two paragraphs in this book, Tides of War. And another thing that's interesting to me about Telamon is that he has appeared as the final image in two of my books that I didn't plan. And he is not a major character in either one of them, yet he kind of shows up in there. So let me read you this, and this is a kind of a wrap up of the, of the idea of the universal soldier. This, now the premise of this, of this scene is, it's told by one of the lead characters who has been through the entire 27 year Peloponnesian civil war between Athens and Sparta, and seen Athens fall, seen Sparta win, and this other character, my character Telamon, has also lived through these 27 years. And in this final scene, Telamon comes to visit this character, a character named Jason, who is a uh, now probably 65 years old and on the farm. He's retired to the farm in the wake of all the catastrophes of this war. And Telamon has come three months out of his way to deliver a letter to Jason. He delivers the letter. In other words, he's a good guy. He delivers the letter and then he packs up his kit and he's heading towards the harbor, towards Piraeus in Athens, to ship out again 
on a yet another campaign of war. And this is the, the final scene. And the one thing I do want to mention before we start on this is that the holm oak, H-O-L-M, is a Greek tree, and the dye that comes from its berries makes the scarlet cloak that uh, the Spartans wore and that many, many other warriors wore. So here's this final two paragraphs. Telamon has delivered the letter, and he's now leaving this farm with all the farm hands around. And Jason, the old veteran farmer, is describing this. As the mercenary trekked down toward the gate, a huddle of gawkers tracked him with their gaze, arrested by his appearance and his kit. He's carrying his weapons, he's carrying his pack, he's carrying his cloak, he's carrying all of that. This following was comprised not alone of lads, but of maids and even husbandmen and dames breaking off at their labors. As he approached the gate, two boys dashed ahead that he not be put to trouble by the latch and would have trailed him a distance down the lane or to the sea itself had not their fathers hailed them back. I too was held by this apparition, unable to turn apart until he had vanished along the avenue of home oak, whose blossom yields that scarlet dye which ever colors the, clo the soldier's cloak of war. So this again is Telamon as the universal soldier that is present in every war in every century forever. And again, the last point I wanna make is that why it's fascinating to me is I didn't plan this character. I never had him in an outline, he just appeared. And when something like that happens, particularly over four books, I say to myself, Something's going on inside of me or in the world that I'm trying to write about, and I want to investigate that farther. And I will in the next few episodes talking again about Telamon of Arcadia. Mm -hmm.